I'm highly concerned that this Department of Justice uh, is politicizing the enforcement of justice. You've discussed how there is a priority focused on elections, and I recognize that there is a political focus on that, although, as you've told this committee, out of a thousand complaints, it produced a total of five prosecutions, none of which involved violence, and all of the five were based on threats. Serious threats of violence should be investigated and should be prosecuted. However, in the weeks after the Dobbs opinion was leaked, pregnancy centers in Portland, Oregon, Manassas, Virginia, Austin, Texas, and Frederick, Maryland were targeted and vandalized. Violent extremist group Jane's Revenge took credit for fire bombings of crisis preg pregnancy centers in Madison, Wisconsin, in Amherst, New York, in Buffalo, New York, in Des Moines, Iowa, and in Gresham, Oregon. More recently, centers in North Carolina and in Washington, D.C., just 500 yards from where you're sitting right now, were covered with red paint, were egged, and were graffitied by pro-abortion radicals. As of July 22nd, there had been at least 82 violent attacks against pro-life institutions, including churches and crisis pregnancy centers. Despite these very real threats and, and, and violent attacks against pregnancy centers, DOJ instead on July 12th set up a special, quote, reproductive rights task force not to protect pregnancy centers, but instead to advocate the political agenda of this administration of expanding unlimited abortion on demand. I have zero doubt that if pro-life supporters were vandalizing and firebombing abortion clinics across the country, DOJ would declare it a national emergency. And you might as well send out the National Guard. But because your politics and the politics of the agency you work with happen to agree with the vandals, there has been no task force, there has been no priority Why is that? Senator, respectfully, I, I, I believe we agree that politics cannot and should not play any role in the investigative and prosecutorial decisions of the Department of Justice. We take very seriously any incidents of violence that occur within this country. I can tell you that um, those incidents that you're reflecting upon, if they are ultimately being considered by the, the Department of Justice, they will be taken, taken. Hold, hold on a second. If they're being considered, you don't know sitting here today if they're being considered? Senator, a number of these incidents are priorities in the focus, not just of the criminal division, but of the civil division, as well as our civil rights division. Is there a task what, force? Senator, it doesn't take a task force for so us no. to, to have a prioritization have any cases of combating brought? violence across this country. Have any cases been brought? Senator, I cannot comment on the existence of any current or pending investigations at this time. Well, you're here commenting on the existence of when it meets the political priorities of the White House. All right, let me ask you a different question. Yes, Senator. Simultaneously, while violent terrorists are threatening pregnancy centers, we also have had protesters at the homes of Supreme Court justices night after night after night. Now, I believe protesting at someone's home where your spouse sleeps, where your children sleeps, is inherently threatening. It is designed to be threatening. And we know the violent rhetoric with the encouragement of Democratic members of Congress resulted in at least one deranged individual traveling from California to Maryland to attempt to murder Justice Kavanaugh. Now, as it so happens, Congress has addressed this issue. It's passed 18 U.S.C. Section 1507, making it a crime to protest at the home of a Supreme Court justice while a case is pending. Night after night after night, these protesters committed federal crimes on national television. Why has the Department of Justice refused to enforce 18 U.S.C. Section 1507? Senator, very recently, the U.S. Attorney's Office in Maryland, in fact, has prosecuted a defendant for unlawful conduct in front of the home of one of our Supreme Court justices. So one person? To date, uh, there has been one prosecution. And what about the date. hundreds of others? 
Uh, all of whom have violated the law on the face of it. It's not complicated. The law is very clear. Why does the Department of Justice pick and choose which laws to enforce, which criminal laws to enforce, and why does it seem to exactly follow the pattern of the partisan preferences of the Biden White House? Uh, again, Senator, politics should play and does not play any role in our prosecutorial decisions. What I will also add is that our attorney general has increased the U.S. Marshal Service's resources but that are brought to bear to protect our Supreme But why has there been only one prosecution under Section 1507? Why have there not been any others? Senator, does the department believe the law is unconstitutional? And if not, why are you refusing to enforce it? Respectfully, Senator, I disagree that we've chosen not to enforce it. Again, there has been one prosecution of a, a out defendant. Out of hundreds. What about the, the rest of the hundreds? Senator, again, I cannot comment on the, the current uh, status of potential investigations in this area. Final question. Was the one prosecution you referenced a 1507 prosecution or was it something else? I don't believe it was under that statute. So you haven't brought a single one? Again, the, the, I believe the conduct itself was the focus of the prosecution that well, you raised. I think you need there. to follow the law. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.